that online you can you can watch only, you cannot participate or participate in the votes. So there's that. Brandon Belnick, our town manager, is not a resident of the town of Wethersfield, but he will be speaking. If there are no objections, we will allow Brandon to talk. Congratulations, Brandon. <laughs> Mike, if you would like to introduce the board. My name is Mike Todd. I'm the chair of the select board. David Fuller is the vice chair. Our town manager, Brandon Gullnick, Wendy Smith, and Kelly O'Brien. Paul Tillman is online. Um, I had a question. You, you, you had just said that they can't participate. On, people online can't participate or participate in a vote. They neither. They, they can't, do, they they can't can, even ask questions? They cannot. Oh, well, online, I'm shocked at that. Online only from the guidance we received from the attorney is that they can only watch the meeting. Okay. I, I could understand the voting. I don't understand the question part. Yep. Maybe, uh, maybe the legislature can take that up in the, in the near future. <laughs> Before we get to Article 1, we have two things to take care of. One, if Josh Dolphin would like to come up from the West Weathersfield Fire Department. Oh. Combo, sorry. I'm definitely, sorry. I'm definitely going to get you on that one, John. You are. Please do. Good afternoon. Chief Dauphin couldn't be here today, uh, but myself and Travis would like to present DJ, if you could come up, with a plaque on behalf of the auxiliary for 55 years of service to the fire department. The auxiliary started in 1968, best we can tell, and served in a fundraising capacity, supplying firefighters that are always hungry with food and drink and scenes uh, for the last 55 years. The support from the Red Cross has kind of changed that a little bit. There's, there's a little bit less need for an auxiliary, and they have decided to dissolve this year. But we want to recognize them for 55 years of service to the town, the residents, visitors, and firefighters. So, DJ, if you could accept this on behalf of the fire department, Absolutely. we thank you for your service. Thank you. <laughs> we could get another picture. Yep. Thank you, Brian. You've been officially nominated to talk to All right. Good. <laughs> All right, five, one, two, three, say cheese. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, John Harrison, would you like to speak before we get going? I'm going to use the microphone in the middle of the room. That'd be great. I'm addressing the body, so I'm going to put my back to the board. <laughs> um, and, well, at the town clerk's table, there's a blue information sheet. On the reverse is a poll that I'm conducting. Uh, it's also The poll is also going to be online. Please take the time. Just to, It's a very quick poll. Yes and no answers. Please fill it out. Leave it at the table. I'm also going to be doing the same poll at my other district towns in Cavendish and Baltimore. Gives me a little better feel for what for the um, how you folks feel about different subjects. I gave a, a brief spiel at, at school meetings, so I won't repeat it. But the biggest thing that's going to affect our school system is the tuitioning out of uh, nine through twelve, and it is yet to be decided. And definitively, but all indications are that the effect on weather's field will be minimal. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about a couple of the highlights that are, that are coming up. First of all, the session began in January, and it's a biennium, so it's two years, and a lot of bills are being presented. I think we're up to 480 as of Friday. A lot of the bills will never see lighter day. But the ones that come to, to light the, the fastest and, and have the most effect on on, weather, on uh, our state will, will get debated. We're just starting floor debate on, on bills. Uh, that's when they really get uh, dissected and get a better feel for uh, the committee work that uh, has taken place. 
I'm going to talk a little bit about the one that seems to have created quite a bit of um, controversy, and, and it, right now it's being called the Affordable Green Heat Standard. It went through the meat grinder last session, and Governor Scott vetoed it, and the veto was upheld by one vote. The, virtually the same bill with some minor modifications was presented in the Senate. The Senate made some significant uh, modifications to it, and it passed out of the Senate yesterday and will be coming to the House in, uh, after we get off our, our town meeting break. The bill, affordable green heat, heat standard, they're, they're, as with so many things that are controversial, there's accurate information out there and there's inaccurate information out there. The accurate information is that it is not, you can call it a carbon tax, you can call it anything you want, it will require any dealer of fossil fuels in Vermont to either provide or team up with a company that provides a non-fossil fuel heating source and or weatherization. And as credits built up, that whole system is yet to evolve. The, the Public Utilities Commission will be charged with setting up exactly how the system is gonna work. The bill as it left the Senate, and this is important, has extended the uh, implementation and rules for two years, okay? So, so you're not gonna see, um, will there be an increase in oil for the, the coming season? I've heard numbers anywhere from six cents to seven dollars. I have, that's one of the things that the Public Utilities Commission is being charged with is coming up with more definitive numbers. Uh, the bill is itself does, does not lay out the numbers. So the, then the question becomes the fundamental. Do we continue down the road we've been going or do we make a change? Um, and, and that's, I think, where, the, um, where a lot of the controversy comes in. And you can, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but all you can do is look around you and decide whether or not um, getting off of fossil fuels is, is a requirement or whether or not the state is doing it too rapidly. Um, I, I can tell you definitively right now, this winter especially with the moderating temperatures, people that have heat pumps, they've worked. They've worked on, if you buy the good ones, don't buy a cheap one. Um, they work even on that cold 20 below zero night when the wind was blowing, they still work. Um, at some point, they work really hard. And maybe I would never recommend anybody to take your fossil fuel appliances out. Uh, a, it gives you redundancy. And at some point, it, it's, it's actually more economical to run the fossil fuels than it will be. Um, I think the, the, the one thing that uh, is a loose cannon in this discussion is, is what, what's going to happen to electric rates. Green, Green Mountain Power and Velco, Velco is the one that runs the big lines, Green Mountain is the, is the one that gets it to your house, have both said they can support the, the, uh, both the electric cars and the heat pumps that are coming online. Once again, you're entitled to your opinion, everybody is. But they say, and, and they hope that they know that, that their system can handle it. Um, last biennium, uh, the, 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 it was really difficult trying to figure out where to spend all the money that was coming in from the feds. And this biennium, we are finding a shift to back to business as usual pre-COVID, so uh, we're required to present a, a balanced budget to, to the, uh, and uh, also on Friday, the, the Budget Adjustment Act was passed, which massaged the numbers from, that was set earlier in the season, so that the, at the end of our fiscal year in July 1st, the, the budget will be balanced. There's still, there's still a pretty good chunk of federal money available. That, but not to the level it was during COVID. The other thing that we're finding is that there, uh, one area of uh, money that, that's gonna be significant in the coming years is infrastructure money for water and sewer and some for other uh, infrastructure, but water and sewer money from the feds is, we're gonna have trouble trying to figure out how to spend it, and that's the truth. 
Um, I don't want to take up too much time. The other high points are on the blue sheet of paper. Please fill out the, the, the questionnaire and on with the meeting. Thanks, Dad. We do have one more thing before we get in. If you want to hand the mic to Brian, we have the Weathersfield Service Award to present. So thank you very much. So we have um, the Weathersfield Service Award that we are going to- Hello, present. hello, excuse me, excuse me, peace, peace. Um, I, I've been in the Zoom waiting room for um, nearly 20 minutes. Do you guys have anybody moderating through the Zoom or Google Meets? Um, please and thank you. Hi there, again, this is John Burke, Cameron Town Moderator. For those online, you are not able to participate in the meeting. You can only watch. Uh, if you wish to participate, you need to come to the school to be in the meeting. That's all I needed. Um, through the through the Zoom meetings and through the Google Meets, I can observe, um, but I'm not able to do that because there's nobody moderating the Zoom link that is pro provided on the Weathersfield Town website. Please and thank you. We're using the Google, the school's Google Meet. Yes. Um, so on the Weathersfield website, there's an urgent alert. Um, and that urgent alert, when clicked, states to join the meeting via Google Meet. Zoom meetings are for select board meetings and other town and board boards and committee meetings in Weathersfield. Um, so if you go, well, he must be on, right? Don't your phone. Right, you, but they must have called in. Oh. Okay. Um, so if you go to the Weathersfield website and click the red urgent alert, within that, a window will pop up and you can click on the Google Meet and that'll bring you into the meeting so you can observe. Thanks. Brian. Right. Yes, that's, that, that is, that, excuse me, sir, that is what I'm referring to. Um, I've I've been in the waiting room for since the meeting started, um, and I didn't know if anybody was moderating this. I just want to observe, please. Thank you. We will try to get somebody to. We'll see if we can figure it out for you. We're going to carry on. Brian, do you want to do the service award? Yes, thank you. All right, so I have Anne Marie Redmond, our school board president here, um, and we are here. We have the pleasure of giving out the Weathersfield Service Award to Jackie Adonovich. Jackie has been um, a parent here at Weathersfield School. She's been part of the Hicks Nichols Grant Committee, and then most recently she's been a board member. And she has been very instrumental in getting lots of things done here at the school. And she's been just such a, an amazing part of our Weathersfield community. And the year and a half that I've been here getting to know her has just been wonderful and all of the things that she's been able to do and be part of our town. We just wanted to recognize you with the Weathersfield Service Board. So come on up, Jackie. <laughs> so here's a here's a plaque. Um, okay. And you're managing all that really well, so I couldn't do that. Um, so just for your outstanding commitment, service, and dedication to the Westfield School community, um, we just want to say thank you for everything you've done for us. So. Wow, thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything? You want to hold the microphone? Um, no, I don't want to hold the microphone. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, uh, it's an honor. I was supposed to be a surprise. Thank goodness it wasn't. Because I, <laughs> I tried, but it was in the town report. I, I went out to dinner with a friend that night, and that was the first thing they said when they got in there. I went, what? <laughs> um, so, uh, it's, we live in a great town. It's that simple. Uh, I went to this school many, many years ago, and it was great. And there were... Uh, several times when I was glad to be within the walls of this school rather than in my own home. And I know that other children feel that same way. And that's why I like to do things for this school. Um, it's a great place. We are the closest thing to being a private school that a public school can be, in my opinion. And um, the people within it are very in tune with what our children need. With that, I would say, trust them when they say, 
pass a budget because they have looked at it and um, and they're doing the best that they can for our kids and they've got a heck of an education but there are many parents out here that i know have sent their children through this school and probably feel the same way um thanks <laughs> it's, been, it's been an honor to serve all of you and i'm sure i'll be doing it in some other form someday <laughs> yeah. thank you that's very nice Wow. <laughs> okay, now to the meat of the meeting. So, Article 1. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield accept the reports of the town's officers for the period from July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022? Entertain a motion for Article One. Mr. Moderator, Mr. Mike Stankovich, I move that we accept the report. We have a motion. Second. Second from John Harrison. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Motion carries. Article Two. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield, in accordance with 17 BSA. 2664 and 22 VSA authorized the Proctor Library trustees to expend such grant monies, gifts, or bequests which may be received by the Proctor Library in accordance of said grants, gifts, or bequests. I, Matthew Walsevich, make a motion. Matthew Walsevich, yep. The motion. And second. And the second from Lisa Stapleton. Lisa Stapleton. Any discussion on Article 2? All those in favor of Article 2, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Article 3. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield authorize the select board to borrow money, if necessary, to pay current expenses in anticipation of taxes in accordance with the provisions of Title 24, Section 1786 of the Vermont Statutes Annotated? Move that we do. Motion from Dave Fuller. I'll second it. A second from Wendy Smith. Wendy Smith. Any discussion on Article 3? <laughs> All those in favor of Article 3 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 3 carries. Article 4. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield increase the existing business personal property tax exemption? from $10,000 to $50,000 per 32 VSA 3849. There's been a motion for Article 4. Move that we do. So, motion from Dave Fuller, second. I'll second, Kelly O'Brien. Kelly O'Brien seconds. Any discussion on Article 4? John. Could the board explain the reason and, and the logic behind changing it? Yes, we have a presentation prepared on it. Okay. Hello. Okay. Can you go to the next slide, please, Brian? All right. So when the inventory tax was eliminated, state law required that business personal property. I'm sorry. Can everybody hear? Okay. Um, state law required that business personal property, which includes tangible personal property of a depreciable nature, used or held for use in any trade, business, professional practice, transaction, activity, or occupation conducted for profit, including all furniture and fixtures, tools, implements, books, machines, boats, construction devices, and all personal property used or intended to be used for the production, processing, fabrication, assembling, handling, or transportation of anything of value, or for the production, transmission, control, or disposition of power, energy, heat, light, waste, or, or water. Um, so business personal property does not include inventory or goods and chattels so fixed to real property as to have become part thereof. Uh, next slide. 
Um, so each year, businesses are required to file the Vermont Personal Property Form with the listers on or before April 20th, which lists their personal property to generate an appraisal based on its fair market value. Um, so what that means is every business in Leathersfield has to fill out this form. And sorry, this is, kind of sounds a little funny. Um, has to fill out their form and provide the town with an inventory of all of their uh, personal property that they use for the business. Um, currently, Leathersfield voters approved the exemption of the first 10,000 of assessed business personal property value. Um, 10,000 is currently deducted from the total of each business personal property account before taxes are calculated. Accounts with $10,000 or less in value will not receive any personal property tax bill, and accounts with property greater than 10,000 will, will receive a reduced tax bill. So if it was 11,000, if they have personal property that's 11,000, the first 10,000 is exempt and we tax on 1,000. Uh, next slide. Um, so what this slide shows here is um, what we're proposing is to increase the current business personal property tax exemption from 10,000 to 50,000. And in Weathersfield right now, um, we currently collect $2,838 in revenue for business personal property with a, a value of 50,000 or below. Um, and it's broken out on this slide here between 51,000 and 100,000 we collect $5,009 between $101,000 and $200,000. We collect $4,156 and $201,000 and up is $12,593. Um, so what this basically does is it helps our small businesses in Mothersville um, and it doesn't tax, it, it puts more of the tax burden on the larger businesses. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. So we have a motion and a second on Article 4. Are there any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 4 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 4 carries. Article 5. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield amend the purpose of the Veterans Memorial Reserve Fund to include use for the maintenance and repair of the Veterans Memorial Park and for the costs of events held to honor veterans? Sir, I did a motion for Article 5. Motion. Mike. Matthew. Matthew, we'll all set. Yep. Second. Motion and second. Dave Yep. And discussion. Okay. DeForest, would you like to speak to it? About it? Yes. Sure. Um, the reserve fund that was set up in 2004 was for the creation of the memorial. And as you know, the memorial has been completed for several years now. The funds that are in this reserve account are not tax dollars. They're mo uh, monies that were raised by the committee for the memorial. Um, they were in another line item, but when we changed accountants under Ed Morris's tenure uh, to keep them from being lost, they were swept into this reserve account. We have been spending money out of this reserve account to fund annual expenses for the Veterans Day and Memorial Day events, um, to update the role of honor and the side panels, um, to pay for the wreaths that are presented during those. So technically, it's not a proper way to spend these monies. Um, and we would like the voters, if you would agree, to change or amend the purpose of this reserve fund so that we can legally spend money out of this fund for the purposes that we need now. Thank you. Next question, is there any other discussion or questions on Article 5? There are none. All those in favor of Article 5 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 5 carries. Article 6, to transact any other business deemed proper when met. How about a motion for Article 6? I'll make a motion. There's a motion from Kelly, correct? Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, oh. perfect. We'll, 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 catch, we'll catch it in there. All right. Motion and second for Article 6. Discussion? Questions? Can anybody explain that? Brandon, Mike, would you like to explain Article 6? Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, to transact any other business deemed proper when met. 
uh, we are assembled and, and that, that makes this a meeting. Uh, so any other business that the board can actually take uh, or, or the voters can take action on can be placed before the body at this time through motions and seconds. Gotcha. I'm, I'm really not sure that the article itself needed to be uh, needed a motion. Did it? it would only be if something was presented, wouldn't it? I mean, it's sure. Uh, well, because it, I mean, it, it is a statement to transact any other business. So business would be proposed and an action would be taken to take action on the business. My saying we needed a four vote on Article 6, so. Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Here we uh, are. All right, <laughs> good. <laughs> I won't argue with you. It just seems out of place, but that's okay. But we have a motion in a second anyway. Well, well then you would have two, two orders of, 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 of business Number one, you would have to take action on six before you can move into any action on any proposed business. Correct? They would be separate. There would be separate motions. I see what you're saying. <laughs> but now I've made it confusing. Right? <laughs> I think, John, if you've gotten advice on this, that this is taking a moment. Yeah, Fred. Right. Yes. Right. I think we need to overcomplicate it. Yep. So, barring any additional discussion or confusion on Article 6, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Great. Article 6 carries. <laughs> Onward to Article 7. But, to elect but, all town officers as required by law. We're going to vote on Article 7 by Australian ballot on Tuesday. Is there any discussion on Article 7? Hearing and seeing none, we will go to Article 8. Shall the voters of the town of Wethersfield approve the expenditure of $1,621,928 for the support and operation of the town's general fund? $1,307,678 shall be raised by property taxation, allowing the select board to set the appropriate tax rates. Do we have a presentation on Article 8? Yes. Yeah. Great. Brandon. I'm not going to use the, the microphone. Can everybody hear me okay with the helpful microphone? Okay. All right. Uh, you can go to the next slide. That's okay. Thank you. The only problem is sometimes people online won't be able to hear you. I see. Okay. Well, okay. Do you want me to put it on the screen? Yeah, I think it. Sorry. I don't mean to be super overcomplicated. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this time uh, to look over the entire budget, which includes the general fund, the highway fund, and the solid waste fund, um, to explain what the cumulative total cost cost increases up front. Um, so what we have here is in FY23, which is the budget we're in right now, the expenditures in the general fund are $1,463,444, and they're increasing by $158,484 um, to $1,621,928, or 10%. The highway fund is decreasing by 3%, uh, or point of order, this is only the general fund? Yeah. Yes. But I was I'm looking at the total cumulative increase for all three funds, uh, which is 5%. Great. Uh, next slide. All right, so this is basically an overview of why, why are we increasing, increasing our budgets. Um, last year, we had $45,418 remaining in surplus funds that was applied to the FY23 budget. Um, so this year, we only have $25,000 to apply to the FY24 budget. So there's a net difference of negative $20,418. So basically what happens is if you have a million dollars in revenue and a million dollars in expenses, and $950,000 of that revenue comes from property taxation, and then you take $50,000 from your savings account, and you don't have that $50,000 to next year, you have to increase uh, taxes to meet, to absorb this, the money in savings that you used. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so that's, excuse me, is there any way to blow that up a little bit? Bigger speech, incidentally. <laughs> A little bit better. Thanks, John. All right. Um, no. Okay. So the second reason is our delinquent taxes have reduced significantly following a multi-year effort um, to come into tax agreements and conduct tax sales per statute. Um, so the tax collector has been active, and when our delinquent taxes reduce, we collect less interest and penalty revenue from those taxes. So if you have, let's say, 400,000 outstanding in delinquent taxes, we would collect interest and penalty based on that $400,000 number. But when you reduce taxes down to, let's say, 150,000, then you would only collect interest and penalty revenue on that $150,000. Um, Dave and I talked a lot about this the first couple of years that I was here. And basically what we talked about was that it, it doesn't do anybody a favor um, to let them fall behind on their taxes because then they get hit with interest and penalty and it makes their total tax bill increase more. Um, so we, per statute, um, I'm also the tax collector, so we did, we came to agreements that worked with everyone's budgets in order to be able to let, allow them to pay their behind taxes or, uh, over a number of years. Um, we also held um, tax sales each year um, since 2020 um, to clear the delinquent taxes. All right. Um, so those are the revenues. Now we're going to talk about the expenses. <coughs> the voters in Wethersfield voted to purchase a new fire truck at the Escobie Fire Department last year. Um, the vote authorized the select board to borrow funds not to exceed 270000 for a period not to exceed seven years. Uh, when you divide 270,000 by seven annual payments, the principal payment is $38,571. Um, as I was talking about during the school meeting, we can't borrow money at the same interest rate we used to be able to borrow money for due to inflation. Um, so the interest on that fire truck is actually 10,800 annually. Um, so when you combine the two together, you get a $49,000 increase in the general fund budget for that annual principal and interest payment. Um, that was something that wasn't in the budget this year that we had to add to the budget um, next year. John, do you have a question? Okay, how about, how about so you're raising your hand. Um, the fire department budgets are also increasing um, outside of the fire truck annual payment. Um, major increases here include fuel, dispatching services, vehicle maintenance, non-vehicle maintenance and repairs and supplies, um, for example, dispatching services increased by 17%. Um, and, you know, Hartford Dispatch doesn't really ask us our opinion or whether we want to pay that amount. They send us a bill. We don't want to pay it. We don't need dispatching services. We've investigated other possibilities for dispatching services that are three to four times greater. Um, so we're already, Hartford Dispatch is already beating everyone else's prices right now. Um, and that's due to, I believe, them needing to hire more dispatching operators and so forth, forth and their costs are increasing as well. Um, police department expenses are similarly increasing, but their situation is a little bit different. Um, this is a 100% increase in dispatching services. So in the past, we used Vermont State Police for our dispatch. And basically, Vermont State Police came to us and said they would no longer be providing that service. So now we have to use Hartford Dispatch for both fire and police dispatching, which increased our cost for the for police dispatching by 100%. Um, they didn't give us much time to really think about it. Um, so we had to put that in the budget, but we are currently um, seeking grant opportunities through Homeland Security to be able to, cost, uh, to, to, be able to cover some of the costs uh, but that's not guaranteed, so we have to budget like we would be paying for full dispatching services for police. Um, the next reason is uh, there was a vote to increase employee wages by 8% um, during budget discussions. The Social Security Administration set the goal at 8.7% for 2023. 
Over the past 40 years, inflation has not come close to the 22 inflation rate since 1981, um, when inflation was 10.33%. Um, between 1982 and 2020, the average inflationary rate was 2.73%, um, and the average inflation rate in 22 was 8%. So for example, if an employee makes $20 per hour, that employee would re receive a $1.60 per hour increase. Um, the town of Wethersfield has 24 full and part-time employees. So as wages increase, FICA increases, workers' compensation increases, and employment increases, and retirement expenses similarly increase. Um, the $56,000 is the calculation of the total cost of the cost of living adjustment for the general fund. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so here are some quick general fund budget facts. Um, this budget does use uh, 25,000 in cumulative fund balance to reduce the property tax need uh, by this amount. It increases the general fund budget in total by 10% or $158,000 overall, which is made up of um, the decreases in revenue and increases in expenses we just talked about in the last slide. Um, this budget does not include special article appropriations, which is Article 11 and 13, and we'll talk about those after the solid waste budget. Um, it does include the $49,000 annual, $49, annual fire truck loan payment voted on by the town in March of last year. It includes new costs for dispatching services for police and, increasing, and increases in dis dispatching services for fire. It includes increased fuel, vehicle maintenance expenses, for police and fire services. And this does not include any change in the level of service. It doesn't include any additional personnel or any um, addition of anything outside of what we're doing right now. So this is just those revenue decreases and those expenses and expense increases that we just talked about. Uh, next slide. Right. Uh, so this, this slide contains four graphs. Um, the FY23, FY24 general fund department budget chart demonstrates each, each department's expenses last year as compared to this year. So in the top left-hand corner right there, you can see admin, for example, FY23 is in blue, FY24 is in orange. Um, and it goes across to town clerk, land use, escape, volunteer fire, and general fire. Um, the chart below that shows how much each budget is increasing uh, between FY23 and FY24. Um, so you can see general fire, that's where the fire truck payment is. Uh, what we do is we break out fire, fire department expenses that are shared by both departments, and we put that in general fire. Um, that's got me, fire department is increasing by 8,600. Um, police is increasing by 51,000, which includes those workers' compensation increases and the dispatching services increases. Um, land use by 3108, um, Worcesters by 1228, and finance by 13, I think that's, that's what it says, and admin by $14,670. Right, and then the chart. Uh, in the bottom right hand corner shows a 10 year comparison in regard to the general in, in regard to general fund taxes overall. Um, so general fund taxes appear to be consistent um, with U US inflation rates. So if you look at inflation rates, um, increases and decreases, and then you look at this chart, it's, it's very consistent. Great, uh, next slide. So the town has leveraged ARPA funding this year and in the past year from the federal government to complete various projects outside of local tax dollars. Um, we were able to provide grants to small businesses for the past couple of years in Mothersfield um, to assist businesses with inflationary expenses due to COVID. These were small grants of $2,000, um, but from the feedback that I received, all the recipients seemed very grateful as they started to transition out of COVID. Um, and this is outside of, again, outside of local tax dollars. We were able to provide grants, yeah, excuse me. We conducted building inspections of all town-owned buildings, um, including electrical and roof inspections. 
We're in the process of installing a 30 kilowatt generator at Martin Memorial Hall um, to be used as our emergency operations center. It doesn't currently have a generator, so if the power goes out, we can't use that as our uh, emergency operations center. And um, we also received a VEM grant, Vermont Emergency Management Grant, to cover 50% of, of that cost, which is which was $30,000. Um, the 1879 schoolhouse has been remodeled using historical preservation grants. Special thanks to the 1879 school committee um, for all of their work that they've done in this building. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I definitely recommend that you take a look at it. It's, it's beautiful. Um, and the committee is currently discussing the best use of this building for the community. Um, next slide. We're moving forward with three roofing projects this year. Um, the Martin Memorial Hall roof, the West Wethersfield Fire Station roof, and the Town Garage roof. And again, I think these roofs costed around $300,000 to replace, and this is all being done without the use of local tax dollars. This is, we're funding this with ARPA funds that were provided to us through the federal government. Um, the select board waived the late homestead penalty this year and transferred ARPA funding to general fund revenue. So residents were not penalized. The police department received a $60,000 annual special investigation unit grant um, to investigate sexual assault cases in, in, in our area. Um, so we actually have a funded SIU detective that's investigating um, those, those types of crimes in our community. Um, a portion of this grant is transferred to reserves to, place our, to replace our police cruiser. Um, we haven't come forward with any police cruiser special articles because we've been funding that with grants and in other ways um, with our funding and so forth. Uh, we just received notice that we were receiving a $45,000 grant to do a wastewater water feasibility study. Um, John helped us out a lot with that and we got the state moving. It's been seven months since we heard any response and, and John reached out to him and we got the approval a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that'll be a wastewater feasibility study um, paid for with grants in both Perkinsville and Scotland Villages. Um, we recently received a grant through Vermont Emergency Management, special thanks to Roderick Bates for all of his, his work with that, um, for $8,362. And what that's going to do is update our local hazard mitigation plan in Wethersfield. Um, and again, we, we secured a new contract with our ambulance server service this year, um, Golden Cross Ambulance, and that has no annual cost increase. So it's one contract that we're able to hold stable but no cost increase for the next five years. Um, next slide. All right, can we go back? I'm sorry, I didn't know where it was highway one. Does anybody have any questions on the general fund budget? No more questions on Article 8. We will move to Article 9, Brandon. I suspect you can just stay there because I think you'll speak again. Well, it's actually, I'm going to let the highway superintendent come up here and, and give a presentation on this budget. Great. So, Article 9. Shall the voters of the town of Wethersfield approve the expenditure of $1,172,494 for the support and operation of the town's highway fund? $945,983 shall be raised by property taxation, allowing the select board to set the appropriate tax rate. Ray is going to speak to that. Hi, uh, Ray Stapleton, Highway Superintendent. Uh, I've been through this position for five years. This is my fourth budget. Um, thank you for coming, and I'll try to keep it from painless. Uh, our proposed budget this year, Brandon had all the numbers figured out. Uh, it's 40,000, next slide, we could. I'm gonna need some help with the numbers on the budget side. Uh, yeah. I don't care to do the grant side. Yeah. But um, it's gonna be a $40,000 change to the good this year. Um, and there'll be a 3% overall decrease in tax need uh, this, at, at this time. Uh, one thing we have been doing in the highway department is focusing on being proactive instead of reactive. Um, this is doing things like putting on gravel, ditching roads, putting in the proper ditches and drainage, and that pays off in the long term. 
as far as your roads aren't washing out as much and you're grading less. And uh, it, it shows up in the budget where we've been able to save money. Um, a prime example this year would be the 3% or $3,000 less of asking for a road salt. Uh, we're applying road salt more efficiently and differently, and it's working better. We're actually doing all the asphalt roads in town instead of just the major roads. Uh, previously, we spent up to $2,500 a year on, on sweeping these roads in spring, and now we're spending less than $2,500 a year in salt to actually salt those roads. So they're staying open, and that's just one example of one of the efficiencies we have. Uh, moving on to the next slide. So the highway, our payments are showing up here. Uh, we have the a truck payment, a greater payment, and a pavement payment. Um, right now we're paying, I believe it's 39045 is that payment, the orange is the um, paving loan for Center Road. Uh, one thing I had focused on uh, over the last four years is to get money in our budget for paving, so we don't have to borrow the money. As you heard earlier, interest rates are going up, it's harder to get better interest rates. Uh, last year we were able to pave um, Kennedy's Corners Road. We re reclaimed it, repaved the whole thing. The total cost was, I think, one forty-five ish, uh, one hundred forty-five thousand dollars. We did not borrow any money for that. The money came out of the account, and we do not have a loan payment. So that thirty-nine thousand dollar payment was for, I believe, two hundred seventy-five thousand dollar loan. So we would have about a twenty-five thousand dollar payment for Kendrick's Corners, and we don't have that. Um, when you have a payment and your money's tied up in a loan like that, you can't pay for the five years it takes to pay it off. And by the time the five years is up, the roads don't need to be repaired, they need to be replaced. Um, that we're trying to stop that. Uh, same with the truck payment. Um, our payments were higher for the vehicles, and we've managed to get the payment down by doing a seven year loan. And we've also included um, full warranties on the vehicles uh, up to seven years. <laughs> Where that's really showing up and helping us out with the grade the last grader we purchased we have a seven year um payment plan we have a full seven year warranty and we have a service plan so all the oil and the, and the chain oil changes and filters have already been paid for that was about a 33 percent savings um initially more now the price is going up um one thing i do want to make a side note of while i'm talking about it is that thirty nine thousand dollar payment will be done in fiscal year 25. uh you might see Hopefully that year, I'm going to recommend that money goes into the budget to be added to the $50,000 paving budget. Um, then we have almost $100,000 a year to pay, and that'll help us get ahead even further. And you won't see a result um, in increased taxes for that need for our um, Next slide. Yeah. Uh, that's just a picture of the long-term debt. It does drastically reduce in fiscal year 25. Most of that is the paving loan that we have for um, Center Road. So you might not see such a sudden, you'll see a drop here, but then that money we hopefully moved over into our, our annual budget so we can actually pay and do credit maintenance on paid roads. Uh, next slide. Great, you anything to add? I feel like I'm missing a lot here. No, you're doing, you're doing a great job. Okay. Um, our reserves. We have, I can't really see because it boxes. Yeah, we can't move. Um, we have two reserves for um, the highway department. One is highway equipment acquisition. That's the top line. Uh, that's the one where we usually ask the town if they put um, 1% or $33,000 a year into this reserve. So we buy a vehicle. Um, we can use that money instead of borrowing that much. Right? We try to save it up. Right now, we're at 154963 and some change. That's, that's a positive. Um, the other thing is highway capital maintenance improvements. And this is buying culverts, doing paving. Um, Ditching anything that we need that comes up with an extra expense, I can fill out a request for Brandon. He can go to the board and we get approval to take that money out. Uh, my recommendation over the last few years has been if there is a fund balance, um, again, the highway department is all weather related. So if we have a light year, we have fund balance. If we've got a bad mud season or whatever, for whatever reason, we tend to have a fund balance on good years. Um, that money, I try to focus it and turn it into these reserves. If we have a lean year or a really bad mud season, I can go to the high pot, the select board and say, I, I need $30,000 for stone or gravel for the roads because our mud season has been horrible. We can tap into that money, get it back. 
Um, it's always good to take our fund balance, whatever we can, and try to stuff it into these accounts if possible. Um, the next slide. The highway department budget overall is decreasing by 40, just over $40,000. Our state aid to highway is increasing by $9,000. Uh, state aid to highway is the money they give us to offset our maintenance cost on our highways. It's based mostly in winter maintenance. They give you X dollars per mile and it has increased. Um, there is a $30,000 decrease due to use of fund balance. So um, last year they took some of the fund balance, $75,000 and paid down our tax. This year we're taking um, 30,000 of our fund balance, which is the change left over from last year's budget. And they're putting it into this year's budget to help pay down our taxes a little bit. Um, it's, it's good to have a steady increase. You don't want to see it doing this. Anyway, um, Raymond, could I ask you to back up one slide, please? Sure. Could you uh, expand a little bit on the line, the FY22 transfers, the 98,000? Which direction is that going in? Uh, where are you at? At the bottom? The bottom line, that was yeah. The, uh, that, was the, that was coming out. And if you see the total amount at the end is, is less. Uh, that came out for the Kendrick's Corners Road phase. So, so that's coming out of the 186,000? So Correct. So now the balance is 88,000. It's behind a little. Okay. Box. So Sorry. the balance is 88? Correct. Okay. And this year in the budget, there's actually 15,000 that we budgeted to put back in um, through the. How much is going back in? 15,000 as okay. of right now. We'll get a fund balance after we have the fund balance discussion at a later date about um, maybe possibly putting more money in, hopefully. Uh, not tax, but the fund balance. Is that clear enough? Sorry, you can't see the little. We're trying to move it again. I apologize. Moving on. And one thing that really, the, the cost of living, 8% cost of living adjustment, uh, we have been trying to hire a town employee. This going to be three years in April. Uh, and nobody is qualified has been applied. It's been really hard to find anybody. So what's been happening across the state is a lot of highway departments have had to increase their entry level wages. And when you do that, you have somebody that's been there for 15 years and now a new person is making as much or more than them. So they kind of have an emergency situation where they have to bump everybody's wages up. It's not budgeted. And uh, that's a very difficult situation for everybody. So what I'm trying to do and working with Brandon is gradually increase the, the wage to where it needs to be. So when our folks, we have three gentlemen that are close to retirement age right now, within the next two to five years, six years, I do not want to get us in a position where we can't hire somebody. We have to bump up the rate and then we have a problem with other people being mad or they possibly leaving. Um, so we're, we're trying to get there gradually over time and have a plan to transition to that. Uh, having the 8% is, that's the federal government recommended 8.7. Last year, what was the overall increase, 8%? 5%. You no, know, what, what happened in the, the wages, the, the, the increase for COLA was suggested to be 7.9 or 8% last year by the federal government, and the highway department received uh, 3%. So we're trying to, we're trying to adjust the wages and not slip behind by allowing the COLA to be lower than what the actual increase is over time, because that will uh, come back to my you when you have a big transition or turnover when you're trying to hire help. So we've been doing the work for going on three years. We decided to, I, I decided and working with the crew a little bit, um, they're already doing the work. We're trying to adjust their wages to get paid to do that extra work. And we're trying to put ourselves in a situation where we can hire help when people start to retire. And we're going to absorb that one position, use that money to get where we need to be, and try not to increase taxes doing it. So that, in a nutshell, I'm sorry I'm over explaining, but that's why that's there. Um, the other thing is covered bridge insurance. We have some beautiful covered bridges in town. One of them is the Upper Falls Covered Bridge. And the insurance went up 8% a year for that property, for that bridge. Um, it's a very expensive bridge to repair if it is damaged. And uh, we have to have insurance on it. So, next slide, please. So, we budgeted a 14% increase in fuel costs. Um, we have been using less salt due to more efficient application employed by the highway department. Um, 
I like to, if we have a savings in one area, I like to invest it into something that's going to save us money in the other area. So some of that money we're taking from salt, we're putting into preventative maintenance for paving. We can do crack sealing and keep our roads sealed and make them last longer. So um, hopefully that'll start showing up by 2025 when I'm asking for that change in money. Um, we propose having uh, paving repairs. That's what we're using for the salt, salt money, basically. And we are increasing our culvert um, line item by $1,200. So it, it, the costs have gone up per foot for culverts. And we are um, putting in more culverts to keep up with the 64 standards. And again, those things pay themselves. It, it, you would not believe the difference when you have proper drainage and they're clean. And it's shown over the years how much money we've saved. Next slide. OK, great. Um, the state has come up with Act 64. I do not know if anybody in the room really knows what I'm talking about when I say that. It's a water quality law. And by law, we have to improve our roads and the drainage and put in stone line ditches and culverts and put a crown in the road. It's, and they're also adding uh, more grants if you can get the grants. We have been successful in getting a few of them. Uh, so far, we've received $558,340 for grants. Um, one grant was for 26,000 26, and some change for the Lottery Lane culvert design. We had a aging culvert on Lottery Lane. Uh, it needed to be replaced. And in order to meet the new standard for water quality, we couldn't put a, the existing culvert was no longer allowed. And I couldn't even get the permit to replace the culvert without having a right size. So the right size culvert was a $175,000, project. We received um, money to design the project, so we designed properly. And then we put the project out to bid and we received a grant from $175,000, which is later on to actually build the project. Um, we received $3,600 for the Scutney Basin Road Bridge design. This is a um, structures grant from the state of Vermont and it's allowing us to just redesign a new bridge deck. The bridge deck we have, a pretension bridge during our reading got hit with some debris and has a crack in the concrete, so it's not in great shape. Um, this is going to allow us to apply for grants down the road to get the bridge deck replaced. So if you have a shovel ready design project, you get bumped up higher so you can get better grants. That's what we're trying to do. And we did a $6,000 Perkins Hill design for retaining walls, which is a water quality grant. Again, uh, if you go down Perkins Hill, there are some culverts that are set into a really steep bank that comes up against the road, and erosion keeps swapping the bank down. We're going to try to get some stone walls in there and build it up so that erosion goes away. Um, this is a design. Like, we will start applying for grants as soon as we get a design. Uh, we did uh, another grant for five thousand some change for Wellwood Orchards retaining wall. Uh, there's another situation there. There's a, a spring in the field, and there's a culvert below the spring to catch the water to put it across the road. But the whole bank is collapsing, and it keeps filling up the culvert. So we're going to build a retaining wall, hopefully, to eliminate get rid of that problem. Uh, next slide. I'm sorry, this might take a minute. Um, same thing on Skyline Drive, but this is more of a safety issue and also it fixes a drainage problem. Anybody here familiar with Skyline Drive at all? The very first sharp corner off of Center Road that you can never see around. We're trying to push that bank back, put a retaining wall, put some drainage in so nobody gets killed. Um, hopefully that goes through and we get a good design and we get a grant to fix it. We have 18,000 for Green Valley culvert design. This is another culvert that's failing. Um, it's in a year-round stream, and we now have it designed, and I can start applying for grants like the Lottery Lane grant to get it replaced. So hopefully we can replace this um, culvert for not much for tax dollars. And then we have $8,000 for a road inventory. This is required by Act 64. You have to do a uh, road inventory and make a five-year plan for what you're going to fix, where you're going to ditch, and turn it into the state, and then you have to prove you did the work. So it's all tied together. So we're luckily we've got the money and we don't have to pay to have that done. And then 19800 for a mountain view and other hydraulically connected roads. Hydraulically connected roads are strange, but it's part of Act 64. 
They take these segments that are 330 feet long and they tell you whether or not they're connected directly to a stream or a water source. And those are prioritized um, as to which ones you have to fix first. So we have a grant to start fixing more of those. This is our fourth year of having some grants for that. Next slide. Okay, $36,000 to bring more road standards, um, uh, road depth standard. This will um, help us replace culverts. We did, a, we did a project like this on uh, Valley Lane last year. We replaced all the culverts in a bunch of stone line ditching, widened the road out a little bit, um, and got rid of the drainage problem as far as washing out. Then we have a $99,000 project to replace 10 undersized culverts on Golden Ridge Road. This is the first big hill going up Golden Ridge. They're all two foot culverts. They're recommended to be about three foot. We have a grant to replace all of them and then add two additional culverts to get rid of the washout issues at the bottom of the hill in the sharp corner. Hopefully we don't get too much ledge when we get those in. Then we have $175,000 for Stone Pond and then crack ceiling and on Reservoir Road, Center Road, and Airport Road. These are all Class Two highways, and the state gives you paving money to do these. I can't use this money on any of the other paved roads, so that's why we chose these. And then we have $175,000 for the Lottery Lane Culvert Installation Project, which was completed this last uh, late last summer, early fall. Uh, take a look at it. it came out, I think it came out pretty well. It looks good. It should last 75 years or so. And I'll be gone by the time you get next. I hope. <laughs> next slide. Yeah. It's all the way That's it. Yeah. Just like one thing to say. Any questions? Any questions on that? This is white. How come Sorry. you guys um, don't work on Fridays through the winter months? Correct. How come? Uh, we've done a study over the years, and the overtime and stuff comes out at the wash, and the crew really gets to have three-day weekends when possible. It's very beneficial. Well, most of our winter storms are always on a Friday. <laughs> yeah, this, this year we got hit. We, we do a study every year, and it's come, it comes out as a wash on the overtime. If you start at 6 o'clock and work to 4 o'clock, um, if the guys, it, it, we have it all. We, we, keep check, we keep check on it. We make sure we're not spending too much money on our overtime. We've actually had quite a reduction in overtime over the last um, few years, thankfully. John? Couple questions. First, a, a statement. Uh, great work uh, securing the grant, and both Brandon and you, and great work getting so many projects into the design phase because we both know that if you got something sitting on the shelf that's shovel ready, yeah. that's when you get the money. Yeah, so that, that's terrific. There's a lot of people um, down for our, our non with the federal infrastructure bill. My question is on page 82. Of the highway budget, there's use of fund balance of forty six thousand six hundred eighty nine. Does that zero the fund balance account for highway? I don't believe so. No. And and there's no I couldn't find anything in the town report that that with a synopsis of what the fund balance is where they sit. That would be a non designated fund balance, but we also have numerous designated fund balances, and I think it's helpful to the voters to know the, where those pots of money sit. But I I don't think it's in here. There is a fund balance, I believe, in our highway budget still that we haven't spent that we need to have a discussion with the board as to what direction to head with it. Yes. Well, my concern is that that I, I, I guess it's not improper to use on designated fund balances, but unless you develop the same surplus the following year as we're experiencing this year, uh, if you end out spot on with your budget, all of a sudden you got between the general fund and the highway fund, you got $70,000 you have to make up. And that, so that that even, we dodged that this year in the highway from other um, cuts, but last year they we put in $75,000 towards this year's budget, and to come up with the same amount of money, we we're looking at a $30,000 increase at one time. Yeah, that's why we're gradually doing it. Right. So this year we're doing a little bit less, okay. next year we'll be a little bit less until we get to zero. Right. That's it. Um, I just wanted to, John beat me to it, I wanted to echo, thank you very much for uh, actively pursuing grants. It obviously makes a huge difference to all of us. Um, and our road, route road, is certainly much better since it's been ditched properly and filled in. So thank you. Thanks. Other questions on Article 9, or Brandon, did you want to say anything else on? Yeah, I just wanted to echo what John and Yaki said. Um, 
you know, we have a very active uh, highway superintendent in regard to grants. He had said $558,000. I don't know if anybody caught that, but that's that's almost 50% of the annual highway operating budget. That that right there is is very impressive. I like to say that. Anything else on Article 9? We'll go to Article 10 then. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield approve the expenditure of $334,769 for the support and operation of the town's solid waste management facility? These monies shall be raised by non tax revenues. Brendan, are you going to speak to solid waste? <laughs> Right. All right. Um, so, one of one of the best things I think we've done over the past couple of years is we worked with Reading and West Windsor, and we developed a Tri Town partnership with our transfer station to reduce reduce the cost and spread out the cost across three towns. Um, this way, Wethersfield residents aren't solely responsible for the fixed cost of the transfer station on our own, because as costs are increasing, um, that would be quite a burden. Now, we've created a fixed cost formula based on all three towns, and um, that formula basically spreads, spreads out the cost across those three towns. Um, we worked on this agreement for several years, and we really do value this relationship with them, with, with West Windsor and Reading. Um, it took us a couple of years to come into the agreement, but now that we're in the agreement, it's it's such a difference. And we have um, a tri-town committee that over, well, as an oversee, but provides recommendations to the Wethersfield Select Board on on matters such as the punch ticket, the fixed cost, the variable costs, um, and our haulers, and, and, and so much more. And I just wanted to take that opportunity um, to thank West Windsor and, and, and Reading um, for coming into that partnership with us. Um, the fixed costs of the transfer station are distributed fairly in each town based on town specific figures for owner and rental housing units. So you will see a larger cost in Wethersfield because we have more units than West Windsor. We have more units than Reading. Reading has less unit, units than West Windsor. So it, it's a formula that truly does um, create a fair and equal payment structure. Um, for example, in FY24, Wethersfield's allocation is being proposed at 78300 and $21 Reading's allocation is $22,750, and West Windsor's allocation is $41,610. So if we weren't in this agreement, for example, our allocation wouldn't be 78,000, it would be plus 63 more thousand, um, because we wouldn't be spreading the cost across those other towns. Um, and again, this, this agreement reduced the cost burden for Wethersfield residents, however, it also provide, provided a central location for Reading and West Windsor residents to dispose of their trash and recycling. Uh, next slide. So that's a lot of words on this slide. I'm sorry, I usually don't fill them up like that. Um, the transfer station is broken down into fixed revenue and fixed expenses, which is which includes revenue generated from permit sticks, uh, permit stickers. So the permit stickers that you put on your cars, that that pays for the fixed expenses at the transfer station, and we have um, identified those expenses as personnel, insurance, IT services, internet and phone, safety equipment, facility maintenance, highway service, payroll and accounting work, management and services, electricity, and, annual, and our annual debt payments. And the reason why we hold those as fixed expenses is because they're fixed for the year. They don't, they don't fluctuate too, too much throughout the year. Um, similar to the general fund and the highway fund, this budget includes a goal of a cost of living adjustment of 8% for transfer station employees. Um, for example, the transfer station attendance salary has increased um, from 18,000 to 19,000. That's the effect on 58%. And the operator's salary has increased from 24,781 to 26,763. Uh, um, we did replace the trash compactor this year including a new concrete pad for the trash compactor. Um, the, cap, the trash compactor had exceeded its useful life and was becoming less and less reliable. 
the last thing we want is the trash compactor to break and we can't compact our trash because what that does is haulers have to come and, and drop off those those giant dumpsters and then they have to pick them up and transport them and every single time they do that without the trash being compacted it increases our hauling and transfer fees and tonnage rate and so it's it's really good for us to have a, a stable trash compactor at the transfer station um, and, and, we, and we have one we have one now um, and the good thing about the trash compactor annual payment is that it's built within our fixed costs so the cost is shared between three pounds so it's not just Wethersfield paying to replace that compactor it's Reading and West Windsor as well um, so that's just another example of, of how the partnership is truly beneficial to the town um, based on our tri-town agreement Reading will pay uh, well, first, the compactor was roughly $70,000 to replace. Reading will pay $11,000. Wethersfield will pay $38,000. And West Windsor will pay $20,000. 20, um, next slide. All right, uh, fixed costs are increasing at the transfer station from $120,000 in FY23 to $142,000 in FY24. This does include our $12,257 compactor annual principal and interest payment. Um, other increases include the cost of living adjustment for transfer station employees, general transfer station insurance, supplies, and IT services. Um, and, then, and then again, the 142,000 is split in Wethersfield of 78,000, Reading of 22,000, and West Windsor of, of 41,610. Um, we do not anticipate any increase in the permit sticker to this tri-town agreement. So it's been pretty consistent at $50 for a long time. And again, even with the increases, we don't anticipate any increase in the permit sticker this year. All right, the other side of the transfer station budget is our variable expenses and, and variable revenues. Um, these are paid for through the punch tickets that you buy at Downers and at the, at the town office. The Scubby Market now offers them. I think they offer them in Reading and, and West Windsor at the town offices. I think there's a farm stand that offers, that offers them in Reading. Um, the reason uh, these, these expenses are variable is because they fluctuate depending on how much trash and recycling people dispose of. So when you go to the transfer station with a bag of trash, the cost of the punch should should cover the cost of, of throwing the trash away. Um, in FY23, we budgeted $177,868 in variable revenues and $177,868 in variable expenses. At the transfer station, it's not a business you want to make money on, it's not a business you want to lose money on, you want to net zero if you can, um, and that's done by constantly tracking track the transfer station revenues and expenses. Um, when you start to see your variable expenses exceeding your revenues, that tells you that you need to increase the punch ticket. Uh, next slide. We received notice that our haulers, this is an example of when your expenses exceed your revenues, um, we received notice that our haulers are increasing their tonnage rate by 5.4%. Um, because the landfill continues to increase their fees, plus the cost of labor and the cost of gas and the cost of repair on these vehicles that they use to transport the trash. Um, so we'll be paying $116.99 for trash, and the full charge will increase to $221.34. Um, as you know, we used to get paid for recycling and or dispose of recycling materials for free. And even though we offer that to the residents, we now pay $62,000 annually in recycling, pickup and tippage, and other recycling related expenses. Um, so, in order to encourage recycling, we build that into the trash price, into the punch ticket, hoping that more and more people will recycle. Um, and we still continue to offer that service um, at, no at no cost. At no cost. Um, for years, the United States sold, so this is kind of the reason why. Um, that, how we went from getting paid for recycling um, to paying to recycle. Uh, for years, the United States sold millions of tons of used yogurt cups, juice containers, shampoo bottles, and other kinds of plastics to China um, to be recycled into new products. Not only did the US do this, but around 70% of the world's plastic went to China. 
um, 7 million tons per year, actually. In 2017, the Chinese government cut back on accepting these materials. In 2018, it banned almost all imports. And in 2019, China took less than 1% of its 2016 total. So now, where do we, where do we recycle? That's, that's basically what caused us to have to start charging for recycling. Um, next slide. Uh, since this time, the transfer station began uh, accumulating a deficit, uh, which means you go into the red, um, which could not, which could be connected to the large cost increasing increase in disposing of recycling. Because imagine, you know, you're getting paid for your recycling, so you have a revenue in the budget for your recycling in the positive, and now you don't. Um, it went away. So. Um, we are no longer doing this for free, and the cost is again sixty-two thousand. It's being absorbed, not in full, and the cost of disposing of trash. Um, so, due to the cumulative deficit, the increase in disposing of trash and recycling, and the increase in the tonnage rate in trucking to transfer these materials away from the Mothersville transfer station, um, we increased the cost of the punch ticket by seventy-five cents per punch. This goes into effect on April first. Um, and we really, at this time, have no other option. Um, otherwise, we'll continue going into the red, and we're going to have to deal with it at some point. Um, so the Tritown Partnership Committee met. We looked at charging for recycling. We looked at increasing the punch ticket. We looked at various options. Um, and basically, the select board chair in West Windsor, Reading, Lettuceville, which makes up the committee, um, and, and Ray Stapleton, who also oversees the transfer station, as a part of that, Paul Coleman, uh, who's a select board representative to this committee, voted to recommend that we increase the cost per punch of 75 cents. Um, that recommendation went to the Weathersfield Select Board, and the Weathersfield Select Board unanimously voted to increase it by 75 uh, cents. So um, we will be distributing new, new punch tickets, and, the, and again, that goes into effect on April 1st. And that, next slide. All right, the, uh, the chart in the upper left-hand corner um, shows transfer station revenues and expenses overall between FY21 and FY24. Um, so this includes both variable and revenue, uh, both variable revenues and expenses, and fixed revenue and expense combined. We can see from this chart that we ended the year in a deficit in FY21 and, and FY22. We haven't done actuals for FY23 for projections to demonstrate um, that we'll also be ending the year in the red this year, even after we increase the punch ticket. So what we've done is we didn't want to raise the punch ticket too high. So what we're trying to do is resolve the cumulative fund deficit over 18 months. So we'll end the red in FY23 at the end of FY23. But then we're hoping that it gradually that's zero over FY24. Otherwise, the other option that we looked at was increasing the punch ticket by a dollar and twenty-five cents, and we certainly didn't, we didn't want to do that. That was too much of an increase all at once. Um, so that's why we opted for the eighteen-month plan. We can see from this. Let's see here. Uh, the, the chart in the lower in, in the lower left-hand corner shows only variable revenues and expenses. Um, between FY21 and FY24. Um, so again, you want the orange and the blue to be right next to each other. Um, so you can see uh, in FY21, variable revenues exceeded variable expenses. In FY22, variable uh, expenses exceeded variable revenues. And then we're in FY23 right now, and projections are, are demonstrating that uh, expenses will exceed revenues. Um, so in FY24, again, we're proposing our, a balanced bu budget, hoping that we net closer to zero. Um, the chart in the bottom right-hand corner demonstrates fixed revenue and expenses. We can see from this chart that we had a shortfall in FY21 and FY22. Um, so again, these are the fixed, this is uh, permit sticker revenue, and then those fixed expenses. Um, this was addressed with, with the Tri-Town Agreement, so we shouldn't see any problems with fixed revenue and expense in FY23 and FY24. 
um, because of that uh, fixed cost allocation formula. All right, next, next slide. Oh, excuse me, can you go back one more? I'm sorry. All right, uh, the chart in the upper right hand corner shows the assessments per town in relation to our fixed expenses. So before, if you look at the gray back in 2018, um, the gray is what the town of West Windsor paid in, to use the transfer station back in 2018, which was zero. And then in 2019, they paid $1,785. And then we, in 2020, we came to the table and said we had to create a fixed uh, a formula to share the expenses. And FY21, their allocation was 16,500. And FY22 was 15,000. And FY23, it doubled to 35,000. And then 24, it's $41,610. Um, so that's what the Tri-Town Agreement did again. Um, the Town of Reading, they've been consistent at $18,635, but there was no real way for, for their allocation to fluctuate as, as costs increase or decrease. Um, so now their allocation uh, changed to 19,023 and then 22,740 in, in 24. Uh, next slide. All right, so transfer station conclusion. Um, the transfer station provides a facility for residents in Reading, Wethersfield, and West Windsor to dispose of trash, recyclables, and other materials in a proper and environmentally friendly manner, uh, and, in, and in accordance with the laws of the state of Vermont. Um, we have been and will continue to strategize on how we can reduce costs, including advertising, requests for proposals, for solid waste, disposal services and recycling services. And, and we did this in the last round, we created a more competitive environment um, as one of our haulers had monopoly on the system and we went with a different, uh, a different hauler, which created a competitive environment. Whenever you release requests for proposals and people respond to those with their bids, it, it creates a competitive environment and, and holds the cost to a certain extent. Um, the reality is that recycling is no longer free and by not charging for recycling we need to build the cost into other services such as trash disposal which increases the punch ticket to disposal trash um, so we want to encourage recycling which is why we have not changed our practices however we will be reviewing this in more detail at select board meetings um, this this only goes this is only in effect till june 30th and we're going to review it again um, so if you're interested in joining these discussions, uh, you know, come to the transfer station and joint committee meetings, come to the select board meetings. We post them on the website, the post offices, uh, and so forth. And we'd love to hear what you think. Are there questions about the solid waste facility or Article 10 in general? No, Article 11. Shall the voters of the town of Wethersfield appropriate the sum of $40,000 to be deposited into the fire apparatus acquisition reserve accounts? This item is not in the budget. Is there a discussion or presentation on Article 11? Is there anyone? Um, yeah, understand what it is. Okay, um, so this is. This is the reserve account that we tried to build up for the for the replacement of fire department uh, gear and equipment and, and trucks and so forth, so that we don't have to borrow as much once we have to replace one of these things. So right now, interest rates are high, so the more money that we can put down on one of these vehicles, the less that we'll actually have to borrow, which will reduce our annual interest payments. Thanks, Brandon. Are there questions on what Brandon just described? Hearing none, we'll go to Article 12. Shall the voters of the town of Wethersfield exempt from town property taxation the land and building owned by the West Wethersfield Fire Department Incorporated, located at map number three, block number two, parcel number 26.00, 
for a period of five years in accordance with the provisions of Title 32, Section 3840 of the Vermont Statutes Annotated. Discussion, explanation on Article 12 from anybody. Please explain. Um, so basically what this is, we have a nonprofit fire department on, in Perkinsville, Vermont, which is the West Wethersfield Volunteer Fire Department. And what this article does each five years is it exempts the fire department from having to pay taxes. So since we don't have a municipal fire department, we actually contract with these fire departments. So, um, you know, what we're looking to do is waive their annual, annual tax payment for those services. John, did you have a question? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Municipal tax only. The school tax is still assessed, but it's spread over all the other taxpayers and we don't bill them the school tax. Right. And, and that's the same for all the nonprofits? All the nonprofits? No. So some nonprofits do get billed the school tax? Or the, excuse me, the tax exempt nonprofits? I believe so, yes. And I, yes. I believe so. I'll, I'll have to do a little bit more research, but I'm pretty sure that's consistent. So it's a little misleading. It looks like you're attempting all their taxes, but all of us pay the school tax on. And I have no problem with it. But yeah, I mean that's so when it does have the property is valued. So when you exempt somebody's taxes or if you abate somebody's taxes, that gets spread across the rest of the taxpayers. So, like, for example, if the Board of Abatement abated somebody's 5000 in property taxes, that's made up with tax payments from the rest of the town. Additional questions. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, first of all, that's both school and property uh, tax. And, and uh, this is, this is a, just a renewal of a five-year exemption, correct? How long has this been basically in, in place? I'm not sure what the history is or how long, but I know it's been a very long time since they've been doing this. John, um, John do you remember at all? It's five years. Well, I know. Yeah. Every five years, exemption has to be done by the fire department or the district of society. It used to be some cemeteries. A lot of that stuff has been cleared up. So basically, it's just fire department. But, 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 that, but that's not the question. I think the, right, right. In 1968, the fire station was formed. In 69, they built the fire station, and I believe it started at that time. Every five years, they could apply for a new. If, if this doesn't pass, it just means we have to raise taxes to pay our own tax bill and give ourselves back the money. Yeah. Sorry. Does that answer your question, Mike? Yes. Yes, okay. that is. Yes. That's a good way to put it, right? Ms. <laughs> Bates. Is there some statutory reason why this has to be done every five years? I mean, it seems like it's the same obvious answer to the same obvious question over and over. It's Title 32, Section 3840. Right. Section 3840 of the Vermont Statutes Annotated. If you want more information, <laughs> you can find it online. <laughs> I just think we would approve it for as long as they continue to be a fire department. But I think you can only approve it for as long as it's allowed by law. All right. Fine. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Talk to one of those guys. <laughs> All right. Other questions or discussion on Article 12? Moving on. Article 13. Shall the voters of the town of Weathersfield appropriate the sum of $1,000 to support the activities of volunteers in action? This $1,000 is not in the budget. Questions, discussion on Article 13. What is volunteers in action? What is volunteers in action? Brandon. Suzanne, could you speak to that? I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of Are there objections to letting Suzanne describe what volunteers in action is? That <laughs> <laughs> no. Suzanne, please. So it's a social services agency, which always was in the budget, but they changed the amount that they are asking for. The per hour policy, everything about five hundred dollars needs to go on the ballot. They're a social service agency. They help residents and elderly, and it should be in the in the town report. There's a little blurb about them, but we can provide more information on that. Too. 
page 114 has a brief description of volunteers in action. There you go. Anything else on volunteers in action or Article 13? Seeing none. That brings us to the end. I would entertain a motion to adjourn the informational portion of town meeting. So moved. Motion made by Mike Todd. Seconded. Seconded by BJ. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. <laughs> this is show. Hey, peace, peace. This is ridiculous that people with disabilities or transportation issues are not included in this meeting, considering the resources available today. It's absolute nonsense. 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 Where? What about people with disabilities? This meeting is being recorded. What about people with disabilities? 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 This is nonsense. What about people with disabilities? This meeting is being recorded. What about people with disabilities? Please. Please and thank you.